filming. Okay, this video is to show you how to make twice baked potatoes. They're, they're really, really good, and it's really, really simple. So, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees, and take a pan like this, and line it with tin foil. Like so. Okay. Then you want to take eight potatoes and just uh, take them to the sink and rinse them in cold water and just wash them with your hands like that and put them on your pan. Hang on. Okay, now, after that, you just want to take some regular vegetable oil. We just have great value that we get at Walmart. It's a nice big jug. Take your vegetable oil and put a little dollop on each potato or at least most of them. It takes less than you think and what we're going to do is we're going to give our potatoes an oil bath and so you probably don't even have to do all of them because by the time you get to the last few your hands are so oily so take the oil that you poured on the potato, get some from the pan if you need it, and just rub it all over your potato. What this is going to do is when you bake it, it's going to give it a nice crisp crust on the outside, which makes for a really good potato, obviously. Hang on. Okay, that's done. At this point, uh, once your oven is preheated to 400 degrees, you're going to put these in for 45 minutes. And uh, in the next video, we'll show you what to do from there. Filming. Okay, so we have our potatoes in the oven for 45 minutes. Um, while those are baking, we're going to prepare our ingredients, uh, one of which is bacon. And what you want to do is you want to have one slice of bacon per potato. We have eight potatoes, so we're going to do eight slices of bacon. Now I've got my pan here on medium heat, but you know bacon's not a science. You can fry it however you like. You fry it too fast, and it, it tastes you know a little burnt in some places. But if you like that, then uh, go for it. But I find medium heat fries it at a really good speed without getting that burnt taste and without taking forever to get your bacon done. I'm frying in a stainless steel pan here, but um, you know you can fry in a non-stick pan or a cooking surface or whatever you want, but if you fry in a non-stick pan, just remember that you can't use anything metal like tongs or you know a metal spatula or anything like that because it'll scrape the Teflon and of course then it won't be non-stick anymore. <laughs> so there you have it. Filming. Okay. Uh, I've got some of my bacon ready. Obviously, uh, some of the bacon is still frying, and it looks like I actually need to flip that in just one second. So, I'll show you over here. This is what the bacon should look like. It's not burnt, but as you can see, it's quite done all the way through. Nice crispy piece of bacon. And I've already cut some up, and I use these meat scissors. And uh, if you don't have some, you should get some. <laughs> no, just kidding. But in all seriousness, they're a really great tool in the kitchen. They make uh, cutting real fast work. So. But if you don't have that, just use a knife, and you're just looking for these little small, small pieces of bacon here. And um, that's that. When we come back, I'll show you what ingredients you need to get ready. Filming. Okay, so while our potatoes are in the oven, we've uh, already cooked our bacon. Got it all chopped up like I showed you before. And while they're baking, the rest of the time, we're going to get our ingredients out. What you want to get out is here we have all of our spices and they are a teaspoon of salt, um, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of seasoned salt. Just like that. Okay, I've got them all in a bowl ready to put in my mixture in just a little bit. Then I have a cup of sour cream and a cup of cheese. We use uh, sharp cheddar because it's what we like but you can use whatever. Then we have another cup of cheese that we went ahead and shredded because um, we're going to use it later to sprinkle on top. We have half a cup of milk here, two sticks of softened butter. Um, you can soften butter really easily. You can leave it out for a while, but if you're doing this, you know, spur of the moment, you can stick it in the microwave for 10 seconds and then flip the bar over and do 8 seconds and it'll be nice and soft for you. 
And uh, that's it. The next video we'll take the potatoes out and show you what to do. Filming. Okay, so um, to go with the rest of the ingredients from the uh, last video, I'm going to cut up some chives for the potatoes. Now chives simply are, see this is a green onion, <laughs> obviously. If you cut up this dark green part here, you have chives. If you cut up this white part down here, you have scallions. It all comes from the same thing, a green onion. So, I'm going to chop up this part and get some chives. Now, you can put the chives in your, by the way, I'm going to cut up three. You can put those uh, in your ingredients and mix it into your potato, and that's totally good and great. I'm going to garnish uh, this, these chives on top of my potatoes because I have some people who don't like green onions and that way I have the option of leaving it off but uh, you can do whatever you want it's really not rocket science also um, I showed you how to soften two sticks of butter because it's what you're supposed to do but in this case I'm going to cheat because it doesn't hurt if it's melted and it's much easier to stir in so I went ahead and melted my two sticks of butter you're supposed to soften it but we're going to cheat and melt our two sticks okay and uh, in the next video I will show you uh, how to get the potatoes prepared, put all these ingredients in them. Filming. Okay, so our potatoes, we got them out of the oven. They've been in a 400 degree oven for one hour. Now we're going to check to see if they're done. How you do that, you just take a steak knife, just a regular steak knife, and stick it through the center of your potato or the thickest part. And if it goes through smoothly, then your potato is done. If you meet any resistance, then your potato is not done. Now, should it happen that some potatoes are done and some potatoes aren't, then take the potatoes that are done, set them aside, and cover them with some tinfoil or something to keep them warm, and put the ones that are not done back in the oven, 400 degrees, for 15 minutes. And then take them out, see if they're done, and just keep doing that until all of your potatoes are done. Okay. okay. So, uh, the potatoes are done, and what you're going to do is take a clean kitchen towel, and grab your potato. The reason you want the clean kitchen towel is because these are freaking hot. They're right <laughs> out of the oven. And uh, it's going to get messy with the potatoes, so don't worry about it. You can wash it later. Now, you want to take it, you want to take your knife, and as you can see, potatoes, you can hold it, it has, you can cut it, and that'll make two thin strips. But we don't want thin strips, we want deep bowls. So you want to flip it to where the wide part of the potato is facing you so that when you cut it, you can see on both sides of my knife you're going to have two deep bowls as opposed to two little thin chips. You do not want that. You want bowls. So take that, careful with your knife, and cut it right through. Let go. Now, my skin is giving me some trouble, so I'm just going to take my handy dandy meat scissors and cut it right up the middle there. Another good reason to have meat scissors. I'm just going to put this one down for a second. Now you want to take a tablespoon, and what you want to do is you want to uh, you want to get the meat. You want to separate the meat from the skin of the potato, and you don't have to get all of it, but you want to get most of it. And the way to do that is to just go really slow and really gently, and put the edge of your spoon near the edge of the skin. I mean, near the edge of the meat, obviously, and separate it and put it into your mixing bowl. You're just going to do that all over the potato. Just go slow and gently. I mean, you don't have to, but you're trying not to tear up your skin because you're going to use it for a bowl. Obviously, you want your bowl intact. <laughs> just do it all over. You don't have to get every little bit, but, you know, get as much as you want. <laughs> I like a lot of filling, so I'm going to try to get most of it. Okay, I have to do that, and obviously I have to do that with the rest of my potatoes. But just to show you this one, you now have a potato skin bowl to put your filling. It's going to be really great. Now we're going to do that with the rest of our potatoes. And once you do that, you're going to take all your ingredients and put them in the bowl and mix them together. And we'll show you how that should look in the next video. Filming. Okay, so now we're going to mix our ingredients together. What you want to do is get your, excuse me, I'll move this up so you can see it. You're going to put your butter in, excuse me, your milk, and your sour cream. You put all those in the bowl with your 
potatoes. Excuse me. There we go. Then you want to take, this is just a potato masher. And if you don't have one, you can just use a regular spoon and just stir it. That's no big deal. But a, a potato masher is preferable. Take it and mash your ingredients into your potatoes. Be careful, obviously. You can see they're trying to, you know, come out over the bowl. So just be careful. You don't want to mash it into soup. You just want to mash it all together. And I'll just keep doing this, and then I'll show you how to put the rest in. Filming. Okay, so we finished mashing in our sour cream and our butter and our milk into our potatoes, and you can see here this is how it looks. Now we're going to add our seasonings, like so. And our cheese, remember that this is only half of the cheese. We started off with two cups, but we set one cup aside to garnish the top with later. So add your cheese, switch hands. <laughs> there we go. And your bacon. Then take a spoon and carefully fold all that into the mix. The reason you didn't do it before is because you don't want to just mash your cheese into nothingness and you don't want to crumble your bacon into little crumbs. You want pieces of bacon. So don't stir this like a cup of coffee. Just sort of take your spoon and fold it and just keep doing that until everything is nice and mixed. Filming. Okay, so we've uh, done all of our potato skins, got, them, uh, got all the meat separated from the skin. We have mixed all of our ingredients together and this is what it should look like. See, it's still quite lumpy, which is a good thing. We're not trying to make pudding, we're trying to make filling for our potatoes. You should have big lumps of potatoes in there, and that's obviously really good. And you're just going to take your spoon, take a bowl of potato skin, you know, your potato skin bowl, and fill it like so. Now, you want to fill them level like that, especially if you're going to, you know, I don't know, if you're going to present this food to somebody else. It's just prettier that way. Now to me, I love the filling, so my opinion is the more the merrier. So I'm just going to let it overflow and it's going to be ugly, but it's going to be that much better. But if you're going to present it, then just fill them level, like so, and fill all your potatoes. And if you have some left over, some filling, you can decide what to do with it. I'm just going to put them on top, pile it on. <laughs> but you know, you can just, I don't know, save it, eat it later, <laughs> whatever you want to do. The point of all that is to say that level is the pretty way to do it, or you can fill it, and that's the good way to eat it, which is what I'm going to do later. Obviously, I have to fill all these. I'm not going to film all that, but this way you can just see how it's done. It's really simple. Oh, by the way, I meant to tell you in the beginning of this video, you want to uh, lower the heat of your oven while you're doing this. Reduce your heat to 300 degrees. And um, after this, we're going to put them in the oven and uh, uh, for 10 minutes. You're going to put them in the oven for 10 minutes and the next video will tell you what to do next. Filming. Okay, so our potatoes are done. We took them out of the oven and they've been in the 300 degree oven for 10 minutes as you can see. This is how they should look. They look really, really good actually. And again, if you're going for a prettier look, you could have uh, left some of this filling out and just made them level. I certainly piled it on because I absolutely love the filling. That's how I like to eat mine. But it's not rocket science to do however you want. But this next step is unnecessary. You don't have to do it, but we like to do it because it's much prettier, it's much tastier. And what we're going to do is, I'm just going to do a few to show you. You're going to take that cup of cheese that you had shred and set aside earlier, and you're just going to garnish your potato. It doesn't have to be heavy. You just do it real light, like that. And what that's going to do, I'll tell you in a second. Hang on. Then, like chives, which I do, and sprinkle some chives on there. Isn't that pretty? Makes it pretty, makes it taste better. It's really great. Now I'm going to do the rest of these. When I get done, I'm going to put them in the oven. I'm going to turn my oven on to broil. And uh, with a broiler, if you don't know, you want to put your pan on the top shelf and turn the broiler on and you want to like count to 10 and then open the door and check it and count to 10 and open the door and check it. And when you see it getting brown on top, you want to take it out. What you don't want to do is walk away and say, you know what, I think I have time, I'm going to wash my hands, because you will burn your food. I've done it several times, so I should be an expert. So, 
uh, that's what you do. We're going to finish the rest of this pan with the garnishes and then we're going to put it under the broiler and then we're going to show you what it looks like when it's done and then you can eat. Filming. Okay, so this is our finished product. As we put it under the broiler, you can see we got a nice brown on the cheese, a nice brown on the green onion. The whole thing just looks really, really good. And there is your twice baked potato. Now, obviously this, this isn't an exact science. I mean, um, I used eight pieces of bacon this time with the, with the potatoes, but usually I put a pound of bacon in because I love a lot of meat in my food. And sometimes we put more sour cream, more milk, more cheese, and you can add and, and you can take away. It really doesn't matter. It just depends on how you like it. All this is is really vamped up loaded baked potatoes. It's a really, really great way to eat it. But that's all it is. So just you know, play with it and do whatever you like. You can see why we put the, the chives on top as a garnish instead of in the mix because this person clearly doesn't like green onions so we left his with just cheese and the rest of them have green onions. There you have it, twice baked potatoes.